Old School Hustlers and Their Stories. Cornbread Red. Because I remember at the front of it, I seen I seen about six of them come in the back door. I had them big shields over their face, big long black things. So I, I talked to myself, I said, well, hell, they're going to hold this place up. And all of a sudden, about six or seven <laughs> stormed in the front door. And I'm up to the front counter, I jumped over behind the counter and kind of got down. And, this one guy, he grabbed me one of the big long belly jacks. He said, come out behind her and get against the wall with your hand on your head. <laughs> so we standing like this. And, and it, 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 you know, it was two or three deep. Somebody's on the, on my back like this. And I looked around, it was red. He said, I've been around pool rooms 40 goddamn years. I ain't never seen nothing like this. And this detective rammed him in the side and said, shut up. <laughs> So they took everybody's belongings, you know, put them in a big envelope. Cornbread had seven cents and a pair of fingernail clippers. <laughs> I swear, Billy, if I'm lying, I'm dying. When we, was at, we was at the Stardust one year, me and a buddy of mine, passed Red out on the strip, him a size more hitchhiking out on the strip, hitchhiking. I told my buddy, I said, don't stop and give him a ride. I just waved at him. And so, you know, a couple hours later, they made it up to the Room at the start, that's where he had to come to me and said, Why don't you stop picking us up? I said, Well, you two on your some bitches out there hitchhiking. I said, You deserve the walk. He said, Yeah. I said, Y'all's probably broke anyway. He said, Yeah, we were broke. Him and size went 60,000 shooting like crabs out there hitchhiking on yeah. the front. Like <laughs> really he really was a character. I miss him. You know? just like you. But anyway, it goes down to the last game and last ball. And Red has got a straight back. So he looked around at me, he said, what, what's your name? I said, uh, Truman. He said, well, Truman, he said, straight back underneath of your cards. And he hit that See, ball a hundred mile an hour, and it just split the pocket. Like this, just wait. And he always was in action because everyone liked to watch him play because he was a character. Oh, it's on. But what he didn't like was when people would bet on him and not give him what he deserved. You know, he was really, really, uh, in other words, he, he was really concerned about that, overly concerned about that. And one day he was playing one pocket in the rack and he on a snicker table. And he was playing Jew Paul. And Jew Paul was a pots and pans man up there, you know, the other one got, you know, he made millions and millions of dollars. And everybody wanted to play Paul. So Red was playing him because he was the guy everybody wanted to watch play Paul. <laughs> but he was colorful, you know, and he would, he would, he would holler at Paul and call him names and shit. And he, just, he was a funny guy. So now, when he was playing, Paul started betting the rail. So Ray was concerned about who he was betting because, you know, he didn't like people betting the rail if he wasn't going to get his end of it because he really felt that he was entitled to pretty good if he won for anybody. So he, when he was, when they were playing, the board had it that if Red, they were going to take care of Red. Okay, but, you know, and Red, Red was shooting, you know, just for maybe a couple thousand a game, he might have gotten some of it, you know. Uh, but Paul was betting 10000 or 8000 a game on the side with a rail. So, <laughs> so, so Red said, well, you sturdy son of a bitch. You got to put a bet on me. He said, well, take this. And he shot the fucking ball off the table. <laughs> he said, now, make another bet. <laughs> <laughs>